man. Lost, what have you done? Now people think that they can parry the freaking flaming strike. Remember this video? The title, how to deal with flaming strike. Sorry to parry that, did you? <laughs> that's how you, um... That's how you counter that, by the way. <laughs> of course he's sarcastic. But, you know, the title and everything, like, it's, it does a job. I'm pretty sure there are, like, people that believe that is actually the case. Which is unfortunate, man. It's really unfortunate. You know what? Let's take this opportunity to talk about the Flaming Strike, how to play with it, how to play against it, and so on and so forth. So, first thing first, Flaming Strike has a lingering hitbox that is very, very powerful. It also has the follow-up that deals a lot of damage, especially on weapons like uh, the Knight Rider that I have over here. It scales of strength, so it is pretty much a tool that shines perfectly on the strength builds. Also, because of its hitbox lingering properties, it is even useful on the dexterity builds, mostly as a zoning tool. It can be free aim, so even if someone tries to jump over it, which is absolutely possible, you can catch people off the air, and then you have possibility to follow up the another L2 as the first part of the ash is perfectly spammable and yeah spammability if you want to hit the combo of the l2 into the r2 you need to hit people in the later frames that means if you are going to hit that l1 and your opponent gonna receive the damage and after that you're gonna follow up with the r2 you are never going to catch them even with the panic roll they are just going to roll out also if you're gonna leave the linger for like half the second someone's simply gonna run into it and they are going to receive damage they're gonna get staggered then you can follow up with the r2 and that's going to be confirmed damage Essentially speaking, the guaranteed uh, follow-up on the R2 is perfectly noticeable if you are going to spend some time with the Sash of War, if you're going to learn uh, the moments when uh, you have guaranteed true combo, you are never going to have to, to use the R2 without previous visual cue that you have a safe true combo to execute. Because of that, this Ash is not really parryable. I mean, technically the second part is, uh, but as long as you know how to use this tool, it is very unlikely that anyone is ever going to parry you. So yeah, make things very short. Use the first part of the Ash and use it a lot. Then you're using the follow-up R2 only in cases you have the confirmed hit. Now how to fight against the flaming strike. If you have more than 100 poise, as I have over here, you can just straight up run into the first part of the flaming strike Ash of War and you are not going to get stunned. So if you have good weapon that deals a lot of damage, you are simply going to out-trade. So, for example, setups like Gags, optimized dual spears, or even like running R2 with uh, heavy thrusting swords, running attacks with uh, Knight Rider's Glaive, or Sword Spear, if you are running Dex build. Anything that can deal a lot of damage and benefit, for example, from the Spear Talisman and so on, supposed to completely out-trade the first part of the Flaming Strike Ash of War. So, ultimately, the counter to the flaming strike is high enough poise. You need exactly 100 poise, but there is a tricky part. The poise values in this game are decimal. So for an example, if you are going to stab the full goat, you pretty much ending up with 100 poise here in the stats, but in reality it is 99.99. .99. And because of that, you are not going to withstand the flaming strike attack. So, better safe than sorry, and I personally always go for at least 101, just for the sake of to be safe with my trades. Now, what if you don't have 
that high amount of poise. So the first thing that you can do is, for example, you can start crying as water increases your fire res in all seriousness. This is a very powerful zoning tool. If you do not have more than 100 poise, you are not really dealing with the flaming strike. You just try to hold space, you try to wait it out. Don't really try to attack your opponent when the flaming strike is disappearing or something like that. Because it simply has lingering hitbox and you are going to get hit. You're just gonna run into it. It is, after all, one of the most powerful ashes of war in the game. Perhaps even too strong. And uh, you just simply have to respect it. There is no easy way around it. You cannot just parry it like a mad lad. At least not against people that know what they are doing. So yeah, happy poise stacking and I see you in the next one. Bye!